We're doing great. Um, keep them busy. Uh, just waiting for this COVID crap to pass, you know? Yeah, you're in a trippy situation. You're selling the cure, except you, the, you, can't, you can't get open, right? right. You can't get well, the shop open to start curing people. We are open. It's just people are so spooked. Um, it's unfortunate. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense. You would think that it'd be a wake-up call for most. But, yeah. So, it is what it is. This it's wasn't tough. the point of my call, but, but truly one of the best things about what you do is the um, healthy peer pressure from attending the daily one hour session at CrossFit Omaha, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not going to be doing anything bad for one hour. Right? You'll be moving the needle in the opposite direction. You won't be having a soda pop. You won't be having refined carbohydrates. You'll be exercising. You'll be, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, no, and your mentality, your mental, like your headspace is in a so much better place. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, what's one thing you've done to help make yourself, this is not the point of the call, but since I have you, um, you're huge into nutrition. What's one thing you've done to make yourself, um, if and when you get COVID, to make yourself a better fighter of it? What's one thing you've done that you think to increase your um, immune system? Uh, I teach uh, my, yeah, I love to just kind of say, keep food simple and keep it colorful. So I, when I do my nutritional lifestyle challenges, I give them a color every day to eat. Um, and it can be a fruit or a vegetable. So a lot of people don't even realize how like, oh yeah, I guess you're right. If you tell me to eat something red, like I could do that. But if I were to tell them like, eat a tomato, they might say, well, I don't really like tomatoes. So I guess I won't eat tomatoes today. So give the, it's like kids, right? Give them choices. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. You're treating them like little kids. Give them choices, give them the control. Give yep. them choices and make a good choice. So keep it colorful is my motto. Do you want to go to your room or do you want to pick up your Legos? <laughs> no <way>. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking how remarkable it is that, you know, um, 10 years ago, someone could be a professional athlete. They could be at the top of their game. And when they go to retire, it's all over. But now with social media, you get to actually take your, a little bit of your world with you, a big piece of your world with you. Oh, a really big piece. Yeah. Simone. Yeah. And it's, a, and it's a really, really fortunate time for people who um, are able to parlay that, that advantage that you have over someone who may have been 20 times the star, an Olympian, a professional football player, but the second they're not on the um, air for a year, their star wanes. Whereas it's not like that. You have your own, you have your own platform. You have your own TV show. You have your own People magazine. You have your own. It's cool. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. It is cool. How old are you, Stacey? 35. And, and a huge part of your Instagram, a huge part, at least the last year that I look back, is really you sharing um, your health success. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people tend to forget. They want to be the superstar. They want to be the games athlete. Um, but at the bottom of the fitness pyramid, and I always go back to that fitness pyramid, is nutrition. And I think you have to have that foundation first. But the cool thing about nutrition is that it includes sleep and it includes stress and it includes, you know, just your whole lifestyle. Um, and if you're a mom and you want to be a games athlete, you can still be that. Um, Kara Saunders is a wildly awesome example of that. <laughs> um, and she, you know what, I bet you if you were to ask Kara, like, okay, well, how's your sleep, even with a little girl, um, or how's your nutrition, it'd be pretty like, spot on. Um, and so I think that in itself is just a reminder to people like, Hey, you got to get that stuff down first. If, and then the fitness will come, um, with that. So yeah, I've um, had success with that. So share it. I liked how you called her Kara and Kara. I do that too, to cover oh. your bases. Like you got, you got both. Like what, what's someone going to say? Know, you got it. Hard. You got to cover. I know, whatever. She is amazing. Um, it, Holy crap. The, in, the, in the last three weeks of my life is the first time, I'm 48, in the history of my life that I haven't had a single 
refined carbohydrate, sugar, or actually any carbohydrate. I don't know if you're going to approve of this, but I actually stopped it, eat, stopped eating fruits and vegetables too. And it's been three weeks and, um, all my inflammation went away. And in the last 10 years, my back has never, ever, ever felt the way it feels now. Now I am a bit sluggish. I will say that, but it's an amazing trade off at 48 for, um, zero pain. I mean, I've had zero sugar. It's crazy. That's awesome. I know. Yeah. Food is medicine, man. And you look fabulous for being 48, Savannah. Thank you. Well, I shaved for you. I shaved oh, for you. I was, I was a mess. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you look great. On June 17th of 2019, something incredible happened to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> born. Yes, Gavin was born. And I see, um, so he's over a year now. Yeah. Um, why did you and Dustin have a baby? <laughs> what, was the, what was the inspiration for having a baby? We got to leave our it, legacy behind, man. You know, um, I don't know. I personally think uh, my husband is a really good athlete himself too. And so we got to, you know, we got to produce and make some, um, you know, superstar himself. So here we are. We had Gavin. Yeah. Was it, um, was it a tough decision to have kids? Oh my gosh. Yeah. We, we were married for almost 11 years. And for a while there, I was like, this isn't going to happen. Like, I love, um, I love competing too much. And it was almost like, for a while there, I was really selfish. I was like, nope, I'm just going to go another year. Nope, I'll go another year. Um, but then I started to um, just kind of battle a few injuries, nagging injuries that wouldn't go away. And I think it was God's way of telling me like, hey, I'm just not going to let you heal. And uh, that way you have no choice. And I'll irritate you enough to say, okay, just, just call it. Call it a day. Um, I also, we had, we had purchased CrossFit Omaha. And so life just was a little bit busier too. And I was trying to set myself up for the future because I knew that I couldn't compete forever. Um, and I knew that when that day happened, um, I would have a business to take care of, something to keep myself occupied. And uh, so, yeah, we did that for, I think, a whole year. And then we decided, you know, it's time. I'm not, the business is going great. I'm not going to go back. Um, I literally left my shoes on the floor and called it my last, uh, my last go. And we had that. Is it, is it when you're trying to get pregnant, is it low? Do you, how, how did you do it? Is it low stress? You just stop using contraception and then you're like, okay, what happens happens. Yeah. Or are, happens. Are, are you, is it stressful? Is it like, okay, I want to have the baby by this date and I want to get pregnant or. No, actually um, I know the exact day uh, that we conceived and it was really easy for me. I had been on birth control uh, for a really long time and I had gotten off and the doctor's like, you know, you have your first period and um, you know, you can get pregnant right after that. So that's exactly how it happened for me. It was really easy. Yeah. yeah awesome. Congratulations. And, and your first, it, it was just like that, huh? No miscarriage, no. Oh, I did have a miscarriage. Yes, you're right. I did have a miscarriage. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I was pregnant in May of, gosh. I asked because the same thing happened with us. The second we tried, she, she got pregnant right away, then had a miscarriage. Yeah. Just, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go on. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, I guess I should, I should rewind. I had a miscarriage. Um, the baby was 11 weeks, so I was pretty far along, I guess, for having a miscarriage. And then um, I had to obviously um, deal with that. And I was nervous about getting pregnant after that. Um, but my doctor was like, no, actually, um, once your system kind of settles down and you have a normal period again, you should be good to go. And that's exactly what happened. Um, she actually was shocked that I, after my first period, I was able to get pregnant again right after that. So um, yeah, it wasn't stressful at all. I was just like, okay, this is just one of those things that my body, and she had said kind of too for me, I don't know if this situation was the same for you guys, but um, my body was kind of like in shock mode. Like for the longest time it was doing all of these other things. And then I kind of chilled out and let myself recover and it was trying to find its groove again. And then I shocked it with 
well, whoa, here, here we go again. I'm trying to like make a baby. And so I don't think it was quite ready. Um, so that was, I guess, true in some sense, made sense. Yeah. That, I mean, Haley wasn't being a professional athlete, but it was at 11 weeks. She started getting some cramps. She had the miscarriage and exactly the same thing. She was scared to get pregnant again. Um, and then of course that first 13 weeks in the, in the second pregnancy, you know, she's every cramp or gas or anything. She's like, Oh my God, is it happening again? Is it happening again? And then you make it over that 13 weeks and it's kind of like, yeah. Right. I know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I didn't know she was 11 weeks too. That's cool. Well, that's yeah. not, but I, you know, similar. Why does Gavin have blonde hair? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, um, Why I, does Gavin, uh, he does, I, I see you and Dustin holding him and, and, and the first time I saw him was in a post where you're holding him and you say you're at a wedding. I'm like, oh, it must be someone else's kid. <laughs> I know. So dude, he was actually conceived in Hawaii and Dustin always cracks jokes like, Stacy, was there a surfer boy that snuck into our hotel room? Like, what the hell? Because he's got the whole like, and curly hair runs in my family. So when it's uh, human hair, it's, it's a legit curl and uh, super blonde, blue eyes. Dustin and I have black eyes practically like yourself. So we don't know. We get it all the time. He's not ours. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, Avi, Avi had blonde hair for the first couple of years and okay. it's, it just kind of blew us away. We're like, wait, what? No. Um, so when you got, when you, you met Dustin in college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you guys started dating, did you guys talk about having kids? Uh, I mean, I think it was when we got really serious, we were like, you know, do you want to have kids? It was kind of one of those things where we knew we were going to marry each other. So we just kind of asked like, do you want to be, have kids someday? And we both said, yeah, we do. So. And then as you started going down this path of like, hey, it's probably not going to happen. I don't think I'm going to have kids. I like this trajectory we're on. Did he put any pressure on you? Was he like, hey, no, I really want to have a kid? Or he's like, yeah, girl, what you need? No, not at all. He was totally all for whatever I wanted to do. So there was no pressure at all. Yeah. It's, 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 and I was in that same boat with Haley. We both decided, we, kind of the opposite. We both decided we weren't going to have kids. And then one day someone said to her, if you don't have kids, you might regret it. If you do have kids, you won't regret it. And something clicked in her and she's like, hey, I want one. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then you had three. Uh, yeah. when, did, when did Haley have um, your first one? I want to say she got pregnant. 39. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think that's right. Yeah. I, I think and I then, yeah. and then, um, and then as you get older, there's a chance you'll start dropping multiple eggs and that's what happened. And we have twins. Got it. I didn't know that. Interesting fact. Are you, um, are there more, um, <laughs> I was just to, say, to, are there more Tovarians on the way? Line. Maybe I should drop that line to Dustin. So he's like, oh shit, we better get on it. Um, <laughs> no. So we're in the process of um, some major constructions going to go on in a new building here. And we were literally like toying back and forth, like, oh my gosh, I should get pregnant now. That would lead us up right until summertime. Gavin's 16 months in a few days. So it's like, it's about that time. Maybe I'll wait until December, but construction is going to, um, everything's going to be done next summer. And I don't want to be pregnant when we're opening the new space. So um, I think we're going to wait just a little while longer and then we'll start to try again. But definitely before um, Gavin is two and a half for sure. So did yes, you do one did, more. One more and that's all. Did you don't say that? That's what Haley thought too. Oh, three. No. <laughs> did, did you enjoy being pregnant? Oh, I loved being pregnant. Yeah. I was at that like super high on life it was awesome um and i always feel bad saying that because i know that there's so many women out there that just had an awful pregnancy and i had none of that i loved being pregnant no no morning sickness nothing nothing i could squat for days squatting felt amazing i had energy i wasn't even really that tired um I got more shit done. You know, you go in that mode where you're just like, oh, I got to clean the room. I got to purge this. I got to do that. Get ready. Oh, yeah. I painted like the house and the gym and it was awesome. <laughs> um, 
Haley had uh, morning sickness for three months, really bad. But then as soon as that was over, it was right, like you said, it was right back to the gym. With Ari and, and the twins, but all of them? No, you know, I don't remember the twins. I don't remember anything about the second pregnancy. <laughs> you should start a study, Savon, like, because I know that some moms are like, I didn't have morning sickness with my girl, but then I got pregnant the second time and it was a boy and I had the worst morning sickness or vice versa. Like, I wonder if it's gender related oh. or if she didn't have it because it was, there was two of them in there, you know? I don't know, but it's, it's. It, it's a trip because she always would think that she had the cure for it. Oh, if I have a little piece of bread. Oh, if I stand up over here. Oh, if I put a cold rag on her in my head. Oh, if I chew gum. But you don't, right? Yeah. Like it's just she was always looking for some distraction. She'd be like, oh, my God, I feel worse. I shouldn't have eaten. You know what I mean? And it's like. Oh, darn it. Um, where's Gavin now? Is he sleeping? He's at daycare, actually. Okay. He started daycare uh, a month ago. And just started, he was at home with me for the first 15 months. And uh, then I just, I couldn't keep up. I was like, this is, this is not for me. I got to get back to the gym. And uh, we had just lost a coach. She moved to Colorado, which I don't blame her, uh, beautiful state. And I had to pick some, pick some hours up coaching. So I was like, yep, it's time. And so for the first two weeks, he went three days a week just to kind of ease him in. And now he's at five days a week. And um, it's been going great. It's a struggle uh, with the food. He still will not eat his food. And I've uh, got to get him back on a bottle um, to kind of keep his weight up. But we're learning as we go, as you do what, all the time. Explain that to me. What, what do you mean he won't eat his food? He, so he was basically... He was, he was breastfeeding and then you, you're like, nope, you're done. And then he's like, nope, I want it. And so. <laughs> no. So let me backtrack. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Um, well, are the kids in daycare for you? No. Okay. But, so but Avi was at his, at Gavin's age, Avi was, he did a year, he did a year of, uh, of a of preschool. Okay. But now so, everyone's at home. Okay. So I was done breastfeeding at six months and then, you know, he was like trying to wean off the bottle, um, whole milk and starting to introduce solids. And you know what we eat, Savan? We eat fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, lean meats, nuts and seeds, little starch, little sugar, all that stuff. And, you know, daycare centers, and that's what he's eaten his whole life. Um, it's canned food, it's frozen vegetables, it's- Bagels. Bread. Oh yeah, he, oh yeah, this- <laughs> Don't worry, they're healthy. I love it when they tell you that. No, no, this is, this is healthy bagels and cream cheese. I'm like, wait, what? True story. I got two stories here. So he had, yes. it, it was bagels one day and he, they, I got, I get a note, you know, there's an app and you get this email with everything that went on during the day. And they're like, yeah, he just literally picked up his bagel, like played around with it, started throwing things, you know, had no idea what to do with it. Didn't want it. We tried feeding it to him. And I show up that day and I was like, well, what else was there with the bagel? And they're like, well, he did eat his banana. And I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I go, he's actually never had bread. And they just like, what? <laughs> Isn't that a trip? That's so cool. Story number one, story number two, this just happened on Tuesday of this week. Lunch was hot dogs and mac and cheese. He's never had either of those. And his teacher's like, I just don't understand like what kid doesn't like hot dogs and mac and cheese. And I said, again, I was like, he's never had either of those. And she just was like, what do you feed him? And I just happened to take a picture of what I fed him for dinner. That eggs, night. avocado, yeah, nuts. He actually, right? had, like... he actually had steak. It was steak roasted um, asparagus. And then I made some potatoes too. And that was on his tray. And I was like, this is what he eats. And she was like, well, he, I mean, we do have like fruit and stuff here. I go, yeah, but what is your, like, is it co fruit cocktail that comes in the plastic containers where you rip off the seal and you just throw it in front of them and hope that they eat it? And she's like, well, yeah, and it's sometimes canned fruit. And I never understood like why he didn't want to eat that stuff either. And I was like, cause it's not fresh, dude. He knows it's full of right. shit. So that's what I'm dealing with. And at his 15 month appointment, I told the doctor about it because he had just started and this happened right away. Like he didn't want anything but his bottle. And I'm starting, I had, to, I mean, I, I need to wean him off the bottle. So at his 18 month appointment, the doctor's like, bring the bottle back. Let's see if we can start maybe introducing some 
different foods for him. Um, and then we'll, we'll give you a doctor's note if that's still not happening at 18 months and then you can pack your own lunch. So that's what we're going through right now. Well, when you see this introduction, um, of foods that you wouldn't feed your kid to your kid because your kid is now in the system. Do you accept it? And you're like, okay, I'll do the best I can do it at home. Or are you pissed? Are you like, Hey man, this is bullshit. Well, I mean, like I understand that he needs to be introduced to some of these things. Like at some point in his life, I want him to enjoy a burger with some bread. That's not gluten free. Just to like, see what, you know, enjoy life, enjoy life. Right. Right. Um, but consistently like, no, like, the the menu is out of control now i understand it's it's difficult when you have 12 little ones you know trying to feed them a, a meal that's steak and asparagus covered in olive oil and some potatoes like it, it'd be a mess you know but there's got to be an easier way like it's really not that messy to slice up some fresh strawberries and put them on their plate and some ground hamburger or some chicken breast you know it's really not it, like, in my opinion, mac and cheese is fucking a lot more messier to pick up than that shit, you know? So that is frustrating in that sense. Um, am I like going to just kind of go with the flow and give it a try? He's not going to eat it. He doesn't eat that crap at home. Um, and here's the other thing is when he does get home, I usually pick him up by 530 every night. His bedtime's at seven. He will eat the entire Ooh. I know, I know. He will eat the entire time he gets home. Like can't stop feeding him blueberries and, and raspberries and meats on it. Like he just scarfs it. And so I feel like a bad mom cause he's starving at daycare um, and only living off of milk. But if he doesn't want to eat it, then I'm not going to force him to eat it. And I'll pack his lunch moving forward. Uh, I'll share this with you. Um, I have the two, three year olds and the, and the six year old now. And because we're active from the second they wake up, literally my kids wake up and then just eat until they fall asleep. It's crazy. I know. It's I like know. they have three dinners. Like every night, everyone eats a whole cucumber in bed. Even after they brush their teeth, they're like, we need to eat. And so we give them, let them eat a cucumber in bed. But it's nuts. These, oh. these, I'm assuming girls are the same way. But once you start getting on the, the Tovar activity plan, man. Oh, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, you guys are all over the place. So, yeah. They're like they're hummingbirds. <laughs> um, I, I would take it, – it, for, for me, for the first child, it was hard. You know, they, they go to gymnastics, and all of a sudden he's like – he gets out of gymnastics, and I think he's going to tell me about doing a back bend or a hand, back handspring. And instead he's like, hey, can we go to the store and get these things called goldfish? And, you know, he's been introduced to goldfish. Um. But I've just learned that, hey, I just got to um, – the grandparents are pretty good, but I just have to learn between school, grandparents, birthday parties, hey, I just got to, like, really do my best at home. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't want to make them the weird kid that packs carrots to the birthday party. But on the other hand, we don't have, we're not going to have syrup and pancakes at home. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, for, a treat for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to drink sugar. No, definitely not is um is uh, when you do your parent when you do your parenting especially now that he's he's not breastfeeding well, let me ask you this go back a second at 6 months how, was that hard get stopping breastfeeding like did you enjoy that um oh my god i couldn't wait for it to get over <laughs> yeah okay wow I, why is that i don't know savon i had to i didn't even i mean the way it just kept Isn't that supposed to be like some sort of drug high for a woman? I, I always know. hear that like women are breastfeeding and they get some sort of like. You should have seen the amount of food I was trying to consume just to keep up with supply. Oh. And I was working out, but I wasn't working out very hard, I don't think. Um, but the weight just kept falling off of me and I couldn't. I just tried to eat, 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 and I just couldn't keep anything on. So eventually um, the holidays between travel, because both of our families are out of town and out of state, um, it just, it, I dried up. So that was it. But, okay. So he kind of got just weaned naturally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's and awesome. I actually had, um, let's see, I, I had enough supply built up. I had to pump every hour on the hour every day for two months. And I had built up enough supply for him to last until eight months. 
Okay, so, I get it. Okay. You're over that shit. The pumping shit's hard, right? Oh my god, dude. I uh, I was envious of all those cows out there that could just, I mean, it was just spewing like, psh, <laughs> awesome. I wish I had that. I had to try really hard. We clearly know from your, uh, how many, how many years did you do the games? Don't tell me, don't tell eight CrossFit games. Yeah. Um, we definitely know from the CrossFit games that uh, you're not afraid of hard work. Um, you have crazy discipline. It, it, it truly is something that no one can do for you, right? Yeah. And it's, it's all on you. Um, and then going back to your childhood, you grew up on a farm. Is, there, is, there, is that where you learned the discipline and the perseverance and the accountability? And if so, tell me how. How did your parents give that to you? And, since, and then the, the second part of the question is going to be, since you're not on a farm anymore, how are you going to teach that to Gavin? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, good question. Um, so my mom is an insurance agent. She's been an insurance agent for almost 30 years. I think my dad's still a farmer. And um, I what mean, does that mean? He's a farmer. What does that mean? He, he, for us uh, city folk? Corn and soybeans and he harvests them. So he has the seasons. He plants them. He watches them grow, waters them, and then he harvests them. Um, and so that's real. I thought that was fairy tale. That's real. People do that. It's real stuff. And um, you work until you get the job done. And my mom would do that in in her career. And my dad, I mean, he would work through the middle of the night if the corn needed to be out because there, there was rain coming, or he just needed to get it done. And um, us kids just kind of learned how to legit make dinner on our own. Um, we helped when things needed to be done. And if that meant we would sometimes eat dinner at, I remember 10 o'clock on a school night. Cause we had to help with chores. Mom needed to get the clothes off the laundry line. Like, I mean, you name it, we had, we had to do it. And, um, I think I enjoyed helping my dad. We also had livestock. So we had pigs and chickens. Um, and I loved helping my dad in that hog barn. Um, we would have farrowing, which means pigs would get pregnant and they'd have babies all the way through the market. So there was always something to be done, always, uh, you know, something. Um, and that's just kind of where. And hard, and hard, and hard work, not glorious hard. work, hard work. No, no, I was covered in shit all day long. Yeah. I smelled like crap. Um, literally carried five gallon buckets of feed. Um, yeah, it was no joke hard work. I mean, if somebody detasseling in the summertime, I don't know if you know what that is, but no, ma'am. What is that? Literally people would die if they knew what I'd had to do back in the day for like, I don't even know how much money I made an hour, but you walk through a cornfield and you pull the tassels, like every single tassel in a cornfield and you walk down the road. I don't even know what that is. What's a tassel? <laughs> it's the, it's the head that comes out of the corn that looks like hair almost. It's yellow. It's, it's, where they pollinate and seed. Okay. Yeah. And um, with this, this particular, you do tassel for corn that you feed cows, unfortunately. And um, if you don't pull the seed, then it'll continue to pollinate. And then it's not edible for the cows to eat. So you would like, if you imagine a cornfield that has million, millions of stalks of corn and you have to go down every single row and pull them hand by hand. Now there is a machine that does this, but they don't catch it all. And that's why they hire you to get stuff that it doesn't catch. And is it above your head? Yeah. You have to walk like this and yeah. you have to wear a mask. I mean, you're covered in flannel out. Like it's, it's crazy. It's gnarly. Oh, so you had mask experiences as a child. I know. Yeah. <laughs> in hundred degree weather in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah. How, how are you, and, and, you, and you see that in your day-to-day -day life now, you, and when you were doing CrossFit, you would see, hey, I, I've really parlayed this, like, farm girl attitude yeah. to, like, yeah. you get work. across the finish line. Just work, work, work until it's done. Absolutely. And I think that's where I was able to just block out some of that pain, too. How, where, how is Gavin going to learn that? Do you want Gavin to learn that? Yes. Um, I think he just has to, I mean, part of it is obviously the way that we parent him. Um, my sister is a perfect example of how she's introducing this to her kids and that's just taking them back to the farm. Um, when my parents, you know, 
when their day comes. Like literally your sister moved into it. She's doing the farm life. She, she actually moved um, 30 minutes away from my mom and my dad. And those kids are on the farm all the time. I mean, I grew up <laughs> with, you're going to laugh, six channels on the television. Uh -huh. And we had an antenna that you had to like adjust in order for them to, to come in like not fuzzy. <laughs> uh huh. And we just lived outside. And I think, you know, that's what I can do right now um, is just take my kid outside and keep him as active as possible. And then when he gets older, you know, take him to the farm. Um, my sister's already said uh, when, you know, my mom and dad passed that she's going to move to the farm and live on the farm. So it'll always be there. Um, but yeah, take them back. What is more difficult on the relationship? What is a more relationship challenge being a CrossFit games athlete and married or having a kid and being married, having a kid and being married. Yeah. And did the relationship, did the nine years of just in super intensity to maintain such a high level of performance, prepare you and the strain it puts on a relationship did that prepare you also for having a kid oh yeah in terms of like yeah I mean I think that there's adversity every single day there was adversity in training there was adversity at the games and as a parent there's challenges all the time and um it's you know it's not it's it's learning how to adapt quickly and um you know not stressing out over the situation um but yeah, I mean, they're totally relatable and uh, yeah. Specifically, specifically between you and Dustin, like, do you think, well, let me, okay, let me, let me go back. I'll, I'll get a little more specific. Um, in those nine years that you were at the CrossFit Games and there was one year down, so it's really a 10 year, 10 year, you know, pursuit. Um, was there a lot of stress on the relationship? Did, was, did Justin ever get jealous? Jealous in two sense. One, that you got all the attention, but two, that um, you were giving attention to yourself instead of to him? No, I don't think so. He got to go everywhere with me. Um, in 2013, when I quit my job, and I was like, I want to do this full time. I want to commit to CrossFit. Um, I want to get back to the games next year. It was the following year that he actually was able to quit his job just to help me with everything that I had going on. And um, matter of fact, we, we make a really good team. Uh, he was able to help me build relationships that I still have today, um, you know, build a nice social media following, um, help me uh, obviously become the owner of CrossFit Omaha. So no, we make a really good team. And I don't think he was envious or jealous at all. I think he freaking loved it. Uh, I think he uh, really enjoyed the ride. I think there's days where he wants me. He keeps telling me, well, you know, if we're not going to get pregnant now, the open is in February again. <laughs> Why don't you just try and like, you know, in January, January 1, get, uh, just try and, you know, go gung-ho again and see what happens, you know. He still lives the so he. So. So he sees you as his quarter horse. Let, you know, I, I personally don't um, know jealousy. I don't, I don't even really know what it means. Like I could read the definition, but I don't have that in my body. Like I can't empathize with jealousy. It's a really bizarre. Um, I, have, I have envy, of course. Yeah. Um, do you think that maybe Dustin just doesn't even have jealousy? Like have you ever oh. seen that side of him? Like maybe oh. it just doesn't even reside in him. No, he's such a winner. I think he just uses yeah. anything. Like he's a fighter and he's like, no, I'm going to do better than that. So bring it on kind of attitude. I think he's like, yeah, maybe envious, um, but he's going to do whatever it takes. If he wants it, he's going to go get it. So that's the way that he rolls. He, he is a winner. He's remarkably charming and positive every time I see him. Mm, he's, that's nice. Yeah. He's a yeah. good, good guy. Did having a baby bring new challenges? I mean, you were together nine years. First of all, well, you were together nine years. Aren't you? Tell me how happy you were that you waited nine years now. Or, or if you're not, tell me how you wish you would have had it sooner. I have no regrets about waiting the nine years. Like I was, a, some days I would, I mean, obviously some days I'm like, damn, I would, what I would do to go back. Like that was so much fun. Um, traveling the world, um, you know, getting, 
getting paid to do what I loved, meeting new friends, training all day, even though it was time consuming and tedious um, and grunt work, like it was freaking awesome. And um, no, I, I think that, and I forget the original question, but. Um, Tell me how happy you are that you, you and Dustin had these nine, nine years, nine years no, of know. marriage. Yeah. No, and exactly. how important that is. Yeah. I think we, not rushing into having a child was good for us. I'm not saying it's good. Like it was the best thing that we could have done for us. We have no regrets. Yeah. Loved, loved those nine years we got to have together. And has having kids brought up new challenges in your personal relationship? Like you're like, Oh, Dustin wants to do this with the kid. I would, I would, he should not be doing this with the kid. And, and can you give me an example on how you resolve it? Oh, well, I mean, Dustin's a wrestler. So as soon as Gavin was able to sit up, he was already trying to fight the wrist, fight the wrist, put him in headlocks, like doing all that crap. And I was like, really Dustin? Like he's six months old. Like, come on. He's like, no, he needs to learn how to do this stuff and get claustrophobic and figure it out. And um, no, I think we're, we're very similar in our parenting style. And I think that, yeah, there are challenges every single day. Um, I mean, that's just what kids do. Mine still doesn't sleep through the night. So, you know, that's fun. Um, but yeah. what does that look like? What does that look like? What do you mean he doesn't sleep through the night? Sleep through the night. He still wakes up in the middle of the night lately. But what's he do? Doesn't he just go back to sleep? No, no, no. I, because of this whole food situation, he's starving. I can legit hear his stomach growl, so I have to feed him a bottle. And then, you know, three hours later, he wets himself, and, you know, then I'm up changing a diaper and changing pajamas and then trying to get him back to sleep. And, yeah, it's been quite a struggle. So how long will he be awake? Um, when I was sleep training him, the longest crowd I had was four hours. Um, and it's gotten better. Some nights it's two hours, some nights it's 15 minutes. It kind of depends. But once I give him a bottle, he goes right back to sleep. Does he sleep in bed with you? Last night he did, but I think it was because it was cold. Um, and that was at two o'clock in the morning. He snuck into bed with us. So yeah, for a while he, when he, I was trying to do sleep training, he, we were, yeah, we were co-sleeping for about a month. So he sleeps in another room, you guys go to bed, and then at some point in the middle of the night, he cruises over. Yeah. Yeah. So we, th that happens, that happens, we have, since we have three, every night, at least one person comes over. And some nights, three, three dudes jump into my bed. <laughs> and the dog, and the dog. We oh, can't... yeah, and the dog. Well, it's that's crazy. Oh, that's good to know. I mean. Oh, it's crazy. I don't know how you do it with twins, Savon. I really don't. You are amazing. It's fun. It's so fun. Um, uh, go ahead. <laughs> like, when did, um, when did, so the twins are, they're two now, right? Three. And Three. they turn four in another couple of weeks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Uh, what age did you start the twins in, um, like, gymnastics and stuff like that? So when Avi turned like 16 months or 18 months, we signed him up for everything, you know, ballet, soccer, blah, 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 gymnastics. But I would go to these classes and they were all identical. Like oh. you couldn't tell the difference between soccer and ballet. At 18 oh, months, no. they just do the same thing. You know what I mean? They have the parachute, they go under it, the teacher tells them to touch their head. The only thing is that soccer, at soccer practice, there's a soccer ball there and in ballet, there's some shoes, but it's the same. Okay. And, and jiu-jitsu is kind of the same way in the beginning. So it was okay. just like all the classes are so similar because they really can't do anything. Okay. Um, and then um, I, I took off. Uh, the question was, when did I start signing him up for gymnastics and stuff? Yeah, but when did you see that change? I'm just curious because I know that it's almost time for Gavin to start that kind of stuff. And like, yeah. if there was one class that you were like, no, like get him into this first. Yeah. And then, yeah. You know, you gymnastics for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. And, and I would start challenging him beyond what you think he can do. So the crazy thing is, is they can all do crazy L sits. They can all do crazy. Um, when they do the splits, I would start encouraging them to do the splits. Avi can't, but the other two can, they can do a, they can attempt press to handstand. I mean, because they're, they're, you know, their proportions are all jacked up. They're just all torso. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> they're like they got the big old bobblehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds like uh, it sounds like uh, Dustin's. It sounds like you guys are in a very similar relationship to Haley and I. Like I'm always pushing them, and she's got a little more of the nurture. Like, hey, maybe their head shouldn't bounce off the ground. And I'm like, oh no, no, it's a wood floor. It's fine. Wood's Wood's totally more forgiving than it looks. <laughs> You'd be surprised, actually. Gavin's uh, starting to learn how to jump off the fireplace mantle, and Dustin will be like, "No, no, no, no! Like we're gonna have an emergency room visit." I was like, "Well, then, I guess he's gonna freaking work, so let him jump off the fireplace mantle." So, you know, but your kids are probably super active, like Gavin. Like even daycare tells me they're like, "He is a, just a really active kid," and I was like, "Yeah, I know. He can do pistols and shit. You know, come off one leg. Like I know that. You know, so." Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's just, it's like your kids, you know, it's a part of them. It's not like we have to introduce them to these things. It's right. just what they're going to be doing. And, you know, they live in, Gavin's lived in a gym for the first 15 months of his life, you know, so running around and doing what he wanted to do. When you see him do a pistol, do you celebrate it? Yeah, I was like, good job, you got up on one leg. And he's not intentional, but he'll be like just legit sitting, you know, and then like just comes up on one leg. I was like, yeah, you got a pistol, like, good job. And he'll like celebrate, like I have no idea what you just said, but okay, yeah. You, you just reminded me of something. So people, people, the most common question I get is, is how do you get your kid to do this stuff? And I used to have this dog and every time he did a stretch, I would say to him, stretch, stretch. And then after a couple of years, I could just say, stretch, stretch. And he would stretch and you just nailed it. Yeah. So as movers, as people who are into movement, you're, that's what we do. We didn't teach our kid to do a pistol. When they do one, we recognize it and we celebrate and and that give, gives them that positive reinforcement, right? Or they yeah. jump off the fireplace mantle and you're like, yeah, nice landing. And then all of a sudden they have landing awareness. Confidence. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Every, yeah he's starting so, to jump. He's starting to jump, which has been fun. Yeah, jumping's awesome. I'm excited. Um, start doing that now. F- final question, and thanks for so much of your time. Yeah. Um, tell me about your dogs. Tell me about dogs and babies. How, what, you, what kind of dogs do you have? Do you glad you, are you glad you have these dogs? And what's the biggest challenge with the kid? No, we have, a, he's going to be eight in November. He's a double doodle. So he's a mix between a Labradoodle and a Golden Doodle. He's 65 pounds. He is the best dog ever. Um, it's teaching Gavin. I think Gavin likes to chase him. Um, it's a playmate and, um, it's teaching Gavin manners actually. Like when he barks, no bark loud in, please no bark. Um, and Gavin starts to understand that. Okay, no, we need to be quiet around the house. You know, we don't need to make noise right now. Please. And thank you. Um, and he'll start to say it and, you know, shake his finger at loud in. um, but he's the best cuddler. He's um, one, but always been wonderful with Gavin. And Loudon is actually such a mommy's boy. Kind of like, I don't know, maybe I just get this off of social media, but kind of like your dog is to Haley. But um, he was a little bit jealous at first. And um, actually, now that Gavin's been in daycare, I've seen a totally different side to Loudon. He's constantly at my side he's underneath the desk at the office whereas before when i would be trying to work here when i had gavin he would be miserable well what appeared to be miserable laying on the couch doing nothing you know but just like waiting for me to give him love too so yeah he's back to old loudon and um if anything uh oh he's such a good dog yeah great dog that's exactly how it is the dogs just follow Haley around they would prefer i go away yeah, I don't think he cares much about Dustin. <laughs> Dustin will be like, come on, dude, like, let's go like, get in my car. And he'll just stand by the door. But I don't want to go with you. But I'll say, come on, Lana, let's go. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going. Is there anything you anything that just jumps out at you as we wrap this up that you'd like to share with people who um, don't have kids but are thinking about having kids? Yeah. Um, wait until you're ready. Um, it is, it becomes your life. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned Cara earlier in this call, like that's amazing what she did. And I'm not saying that it's not, um, possible. I, um, if you want to do something else, pursue that before you have a kid. Um, because I give my all to Gavin 
and it's literally the center of my focus and literally my whole day revolves around whatever he needs and um yeah make sure you you're ready for that when you want to have a kid otherwise it's amazing and uh, it's full of full of ups and downs and highs and lows and you're constantly learning and nobody really knows what they're doing so you're not alone and there is no book you can read a million books. <laughs> There's not a book that's right. <laughs> At least I haven't discovered one yet. And um, you do you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Savon. It's so good to yeah. see you. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you too. Gosh, tell the kids I said I love them and they're so uh, fun to watch on social media. And, thank uh, you. Really high too. Okay. Tell Dustin I said hi and I'll hi. be in touch. Okay, sounds great. Okay, bye. Have a good day. You too.